But, you know, I mean, look at this, look how close. Whoa, right in the chin. <laughs> A big thank you to MPB for sponsoring today's video. So in today's video, I want to talk all about these, the humble tripod. More specifically, I want to try and talk about something that I think has become maybe a little bit of a myth. It's something that I've started to question over the past year or so especially. I don't want to talk about whether or not we should use tripods. What I want to talk about is whether or not the type of tripod we use has that much importance? Do we need big heavy tripods? Is it bad to go out with little lightweight travel tripods? This is what I've been thinking about over the past year or so and I just think it might be quite interesting. I'd also love to hear your opinions on this as well because my own opinion on this is purely just from my own experiences as always you know so we'll look at both sides of the old fence as always but yeah, we're out on another hike. It's a beautiful day here in the ever glorious Lake District National Park and it should be a good one. Now I have got a total of two tripods. I've got this tripod which is a Benro, well, TSL08C. It's a little travel tripod and that's how I've always seen it. In fact, for the most part, I use this for my video work. At the moment, I'll show you on my phone, I'll take a little video clip. I'm just using this kind of adapted selfie stick setup. Yeah, so that's used there, really minimalist. And I really like going out like this now and again, just to keep the weight down, which is kind of the whole point of the video, I suppose. And then the second tripod that I've got is called an iFootage Gazelle. And I call that like my main tripod. That's my stills tripod, the one that I use 95% of the time. First thing I'll say is, I love that tripod. It's fantastic, practically speaking, it's pretty much perfect. And that's why I've had it for probably about three years now. However, what I wanted to talk about today, like I just alluded to, is weight. More specifically, do we need heavy, sturdy tripods? And I think this whole myth that I'm trying to bust surrounding tripods or what I've called it anyway a myth is um, based on a common piece of advice that you'll always hear and it is this if you're going to get a tripod as a photographer make sure that you get something that's well built and something that is sturdy and that is 100% true of course it is you don't want to be out getting something rubbish it's got to serve a purpose at the end of the day but I think the point that I'm perhaps trying to make to myself more than anything is just because you've got a small lightweight travel tripod doesn't mean it can't be sturdy and I think there's a difference between a travel tripod like this from a good brand that's sturdy and a cheap, flimsy, nasty tripod from Amazon that's just false economy at the end of the day because I've had a few little rubbish tripods like that. I'm sure some of you have as well. And yeah, I, again, I would love to hear your thoughts on this because here's the thing, right? Here's the thing. In fact, I'm just going to get myself across this little river here, but this is where this has all stemmed from, this opinion. This opinion has all come from physical, real world experience of using this little Benro tripod. And namely, I have never once felt like this tripod isn't sturdy enough for my needs. I've never once been out and thought, oh, I wish I had my eye footage, big, heavy, sturdy tripod out with me today because this thing's a nightmare, never. Now, I reckon there probably would be a situation where this might not feel sturdy enough and that is really high winds but i guess that's what you've got to weigh up isn't it like how often is that really going to happen and how much of a difference is it going to make perhaps that'll be a really interesting experiment to bring this tripod out and my bigger one and literally see how many increments of shutter speed there is between the two you know i might be uncomfortable going anything slower than 1 60th of a second with this for example, in high winds, but then I might be happy going down to like one quarter of a second with the sturdier tripod in the same conditions. Probably quite a big, you know, significant difference there. But then again, that's quite personal, isn't it? Is it worth it? But yeah, I'd love to know, do any of you comfortably go out with tr little travel tripods all of the time? Because I think, yeah, I do like using a tripod most of the time. I enjoy going out without tripods altogether every now and again as well. But I think I'd always like to have one and gearing towards something like this you know or maybe actually just this 
will be my new primary tripod. Anyway, we're well into this hike now and I want to talk about it. Look at him. Oh, he's, he was just staring at us a little rat. Just, <laughs> just as I hit record, he turned around. Um, so, yeah, we're hiking up a Wainwright called Gibson Knot. It's a bit of a smaller Wainwright. I'm not feeling full to the brim with inspiration as far as the photography is concerned, but it's been a really nice, pleasant little hike so far. I think this is really cool, actually. I wanted to stop and show you as you can clearly see how there would have been a glacier probably 10,000 years ago up in this horseshoe at the top here. And then this valley sort of thing here, this dip, it's called Greenburn Bottom. And I, I just think it's mint how you can see like all the moraine, how the ice would have moved down and sort of scarred all of that landscape, the little lumps and bumps there, it's fantastic. And then, yeah, the, the, well, it goes into what's called Greenburn and that water would eventually make its way to Grasmere, which is exciting stuff. <laughs> but yeah, um, not particularly inspired to get the camera out just yet, but yeah, it's been a pleasant little hike. And I think we're gonna have some lovely views from the top because we're sort of dead in between Helm Crag and Calf Crag, I think, which are both Wainwrights as well. And yeah, some nice views out to the west, hopefully. Oh, wow, I must admit, it feels a lot more epic now we've gained sort of like a bit, a bit of height. Looking back down into that valley, I was only, it was a really steep little pull up there, up the side of this fell. And it's, um, it's only took me about oh, five minutes to get up, but it's been like tough going, you know, but yeah, it looks fantastic from up here now. So we sort of head across this fell, I think, in this direction. And then we kind of come back on ourselves to then get to today's Wainwright, Gibson Knot. And uh, yeah, really close to Helm Crag. You may remember I got this photograph of the lion and the, and the lamb. That was the last time I was up Helm Crag, actually. And we will skirt very close to Helm Crag today, actually, because we're doing a little bit of a loop. Um, but yeah, we shan't be summiting it because today is all about Gibson Knot. But yeah, I thought I'd show you that. I just think it looks, looks epic. Ooh, oh, that's not a bad old view, back down towards Grasmere. So to get to Gibson Knot, all we're doing really is following this ridge line along here. And Gibson Knot's gonna be around about here somewhere. Helm Crag, like I mentioned before, is where I took that fiery photograph of the lion and the lamb. That's the end of this ridge. And then it drops down, well, into Grasmere village really, down by the lake there, which is a really nice view. And then behind Grasmere, the lake is a Luffrig Fell. And then you can see right back down towards the south. It is it's really beautiful and quaint. Did I use that word before? If I didn't, I think I did. But yeah, it's just so quaint feeling. It's fantastic. But I mean, I would like to take a photograph. Anyway, as we move on, I'd love to say another huge thank you to MPB for sponsoring today's video. So MPB is a fantastic online platform where you can buy or sell used photography equipment or videography equipment for that matter. And in terms of buying from MPB, it is a fantastic experience. You've got really competitive prices and I'll show you on my phone here how good it could be. So shop and then let's just search at the top there. Might be a little bit slow depending on my signal. Oh, recent searches, Nikon Z7. So let's have a look. Say you were after one and there you go. You can see there's 10 Z7s available and 10 Nikon Z7 Mark II. So we'll click on the Mark I because that's the beast that I've got. And then what's really important to note here is each of these cameras has its own set of photographs. So for example, this top one here is in like new condition. You click on him and then the photographs that you see, uh, the, the photographs of that actual camera that you're gonna be purchasing, you know, not stock images or anything like that, which is fantastic. So much peace of mind. And on top of that, you get a six month guarantee with any purchases, which is so much peace of mind when you're buying used. Now, what I think MPB are even better is in selling to them. By the way, honestly, even if I wasn't sponsored by MPB, I'd be using them anyway to buy and sell because it's so easy 
and it's so quick, just minimal faff, it's fantastic. But yeah, when you're selling to them, you jump on the website, you type in the sort of gear that you wanna to sell to them, whether it's cameras or lenses or a combination of different things, and they will give you an instant quote, which is brilliant, so you know what you're gonna be getting. And if you're happy with that, all you've gotta do is box the equipment up. MPB will pay for a courier to come out to your front door at a date of your choosing. It's unreal, honestly, it's so good. It's all about that minimal faff, it's fantastic. And yeah, you'll get the money within your bank within two or three days. You've just got to print out a label, put it on the box. If you don't have a printer, you can just write on the box. It is so easy. So there'll be a link in the video description below. Please do go and use that link if you want to check them out. It does help me out a little bit as well. And yeah, all in all, fantastic. And it's a joy to recommend them, honestly. So yeah, go and check them out. Look at this, by the way. We're getting a little bit of light. So I'm just down on the deck here because oh, I want to try and get a quick photograph whilst there's some nice light on some distant fells. And we've got some really nice layers, some really nice texture in the clouds. Oh, I've definitely got the wrong lens on here. I can feel it in my bones. <laughs> we have, we've got the wide angle lens on. Oh gosh, man, I hate changing lenses. So to be honest, I, I don't even think this is going to be any good. I think I'm just getting excited because we have light. <laughs> we haven't had light for a while, um, perhaps a matter of weeks or every time I've been out anyway. So this is nice. And yeah, we're just looking back beyond what is Blee Rig. And then eventually we get to Weatherland, which is looking really nice and gloomy in the distance. The light's changing. Sometimes we've got light on Blee Rig, but no light on Weatherland and then vice versa. But Oh, it's a cool vantage point, man, to say we can see all the way back to the Coniston Fells. And that's, you know, just in this direction. Really cool. But yeah, I'm zooming in. Probably something like that. What's that? About 140 millimetres, something like that. I'm trying a few zoomed in even further. Probably maxed out at 200 mil. And it's all about the layers. And I think the clouds are helping so much as well because of that texture. And then, of course, I'll say it again, the light. <laughs> Oh my gosh, man, that wind is biting. I'm getting the old, getting the old gloveys on. It's mad how much it could change, isn't it? Like when you sort of get to the top of the fell um, compared to when you're sort of hiking up through, I'm trying to spin you around, <laughs> compared to when you're sort of hiking up through valleys and oh, that is nice. Right, um, I'm going to just continue along our ridge, spin you around again uh, until, yeah, until we get to Gibson Knot. I'd say it's probably just the highest point that you can see there, there somewhere. Actually, before I move on, I wanted to actually take this image, the same image. It's not going to be the best photograph in the world. You've already seen it, but I thought it's not going to bring the tripod here, make a video about tripods and then not use it. The reason I didn't use it at first is because I was reacting to the light. I didn't know if it was going to stick around, whereas now it kind of looks like it is going to stick around for a little bit at least. So I thought I'll get the image with the tripod, bring my ISO right down. And then I thought I'd show you this. A uh, small little bit of an experiment, I suppose, but let's say, let me zoom right in at 200 mil, and then I shall magnify right in. There we go, on that peak there. And I mean, if I spin around like that, you can probably hear as it hits the microphone, it's fairly windy. There's a little bit of a breeze, and I'm just trying to see, if you can see that, if it is, or how much it's like shaking all over the place. To be honest, for the most part, I hate these sorts of things because it's just not realistic, is it? It doesn't really matter. But you can see that ridge line there that I'm really far magnified in on. As I'm looking at it there, it's shaking about ever so slightly, which again, it's all daft, isn't it? But perhaps begs the question, if I had my big sturdy fancy tripod out with me, would it not be shaking around in this amount of wind. See, I, you start getting a bit like mad about it, can't you? It doesn't really matter at the end of the day, but, and you know, then you can start factoring in, yeah, but would the image stabilization offset that amount of shake? Oh, goodness me, man. You can see why people start going down rabbit holes with gear and stuff, can't you? <laughs> but I don't know, I just thought I'd show you that because it's quite interesting because this isn't me saying you must not use sturdy tripods. This is me saying, oh, I just, I don't know if I see the point in using sturdy tripods anymore. Is it a little bit of a myth? I don't know. Um, but yeah, I thought that was interesting to show you, but it is quite inconclusive, isn't it? Anyway, let's continue onwards. Oh. 
Oh, there it is. I can see the summit just there, not far. Oh, there we go. Gibson knot. Wayne Wright number. I don't know. He must be like 70. I think it's maybe 70 by now, which is pretty good going. And this is lovely. This is really nice. <laughs> Five out of 10. Five, I don't know. I'm just being greedy. Sometimes you can't control what it is that inspires you. can't control what it is that inspires you for the most part, can you? What I will say is, well, a couple of things. Firstly, this will be a mint fell to come up in the snow because it's quite easy to get up. And where you park the car is on the main road, quite near Dunmail Pass for anyone that knows that. Secondly, I think this will be a mint first fell to come up because well, simply just because it's quite easy. However, it does have some like challenge, little challenging sections where you'd maybe want to challenge yourself if it's your first fell, or perhaps you're not very fit or something like that. And of course, you're still getting pretty epic, fantastic views. I'm just being greedy. I'm just being greedy. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm gonna hang about here for a little bit. And uh, I mean, well, see what happens with the sunset. Glorious. Oh my gosh, it's gotten pretty chilly. I've been up, for, up here for about 15 minutes. You can see, I've got the camera and the tripod set up there because oh, it's gone now, but we've had some amazing light. I mean, fortunately, I've got the shot already, but you can see what I've been doing, wide angle lens on. And I just wanted to try and incorporate some of these nice textures down here in the foreground. These amazing rocks, so we had that one there then that one and then the background was incredible we've got a little bit of the tarn down there uh, but the light as you can see just there it's gone now sort of behind the clouds which is just an absolute classic isn't it <laughs> uh, but it's a good job i got up, up here early enough to, to make the most of it somehow because i mean if you look over this way back towards grasmere there's still a lot of light on those fells where it's here Look, I mean, that's almost certainly going to be the last of it now, isn't it? It's gone behind all of those thick clouds there. But I managed to get the shot whilst the light was nice. And yeah, really, really simple. Bit of like a traditional sort of classic fell top image um, in my mind. Anyway, I love these types of photographs. And really, you know, I'll say it again. I was just trying my best to make the most of the light that we had down here in the foreground. Now, I um, focus stacked it and I'm going to do like an exposure blend as well because... With the wide angle lens there, I was shooting directly into the sun. So we were getting like a nice sort of sun star effect. But, you know, I mean, look at this, look how close. Whoa, right in the chin. <laughs> look how close we were to these rocks down here. So yeah, I wanted to make sure everything was nicely in focus. And we had a little bit of that tan in the frame as well, but a nice classic Lakeland fell top image. The chin is in ruins. It actually did hurt that because it's freezing. <laughs> I hope you like this shot. the wind man you know when the wind's just so biting it's not necessarily even that cold just the wind chill but uh yeah this is um it's been all right you know i think i think it won me over when we got we got to the top i don't know if five out of ten is maybe a little bit harsh i'm so fortunate man i just get spoiled i'm so lucky you know and i think sometimes in a weird little way that's perhaps to my detriment because goodness me stunning fells like this start getting five out of tens from me it's no good you know but like, i stand by what i said earlier I, I do think this would be a cool fell to come up for somebody that's perhaps inexperienced with fell walking and things like that because it's a good old bang for your buck you know and this is a nice part of the lake district i think i've perhaps just got a bit of a taste for the epicness recently and uh, might might be a, a little bit of a detrimental thing in yeah in a weird way but yeah uh, uh, please do comment below regarding the whole uh, chat about tripods and if you need big sturdy ones and fancy tripods and all that I think a lot of you out there do use these little travel tripods and stuff um, but yeah I'd love to know your opinions and thank you as always so much for watching I appreciate you very much please subscribe hit the thumbs up button if you have a quick second as well and like I said please drop a comment down below thank you so much I shall see you on the next adventure out Whoa.